SAS cards are response cards that you play from your hand to block or copy or otherwise respond to things going on. They can be played anytime on anybody's turn as long as you meet the hype number requirement and as long as you're waiting to respond to the thing that the card says. So for example, if it says block a hype card, you can only play it when somebody's playing a hype card, okay? So Kate and I are gonna give you an example of what it looks like to play some SAS cards and what happens when multiple SAS cards are played because sometimes there are chains of SAS cards and then you have to figure out how to resolve them. So we're gonna talk about that right now. So let's pretend uh, Kate's hand, we're just putting it on the table over here, um, Kate's hand is, uh, she, it's her turn, Yeah. and she's going to try to play something, and I'm going to attempt to block it. Yeah, I have one of my favorite cards right here, which is Big Frankie, so I'm definitely going to try to play that. Okay, so Kate's playing Big Frankie, which is a character card that would stay in play, and what does that card do? So, uh, an opponent, uh, opponents can't force me to discard. Right, and that card would just stay in play in her sideline like stopping me from, you know, making her discard, which I like to do. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm like, actually, hold on a second. And I'm going to play saw that coming. And we're going to pretend I'm maybe like at seven on my hype meter. So this says block um, an opponent's hype card. So if I played this, I would just kind of set it down. You know, if you want to be rulesy, like I would put it in my sideline, but in reality, people just kind of put it wherever there's an open space. I yeah, might just kind of throw like it out here. Yeah, and they like to be like, I saw that coming. Yeah, saw that coming, right? <laughs> so I would throw that down, um, and if Kate had no other response, this card would block this card, which means that it doesn't happen, yeah. and it goes to the discard pile. Right. And then this would also go to the discard pile. That's it. But let's say Kate had another SAS card. Oh, Kate does. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, saw that coming. Let's say Kate wants to play whatever. whatever. Now, I played a SAS card, which is a hype card. And this card says, block any card played by an opponent and return it to their hand for the rest of the turn. So she's basically stopping me from blocking Frankie by blocking my SAS card. And if this just happened and there was nothing else, if nobody else wanted to play a SAS card, Whatever would block this, put it back in my hand, this would go here, and Frankie would stick. Let's go, Frankie. Okay. Now, if multiple people want to play SAS cards at the same time, turn priority always goes from the active player, the person whose turn it is, clockwise. So if we both want to play a SAS card at the same time, the active player gets priority and then clockwise from there, in case that ever comes up. Now... I played, saw that coming. Kate tried to stop me with whatever. What if I also have a whatever in my hand? And I say, well, I'm gonna whatever your whatever. Whatever. Okay? So this can keep going until nobody else wants to play a SAS card. And at that point, we then resolve the effects of the cards from the last card played in reverse order. So the last card I played was my whatever. This blocks her card puts it back in her hand. Thank you. This card goes to the discard pile, which means that saw that coming can now happen, and I block this, and this card goes here. And I'm sad. Right. So you can see how, like, depending on which SAS cards get played, um, it, it has an impact on the outcome. And sometimes even in a three or four player game, there might be something going on between Kate and I, but the third player might want the thing I'm trying to do to happen, and they might jump in. It doesn't matter whose turn it is. It doesn't even matter who's getting affected. Um, and this creates some really exciting moments in the game. Um, all right, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the other SAS cards. Just since you're watching this video, which is kind of like next level strategy, I just want to make sure people understand. So this is Finders Keepers. So this card says um, that I can claim a card that was placed in the discard pile by my opponent. So let's say Kate just got this card blocked and it went to the discard pile. I could say, finders keepers, claim an opponent's card as it's placed in the discard pile. I have to do it right at the moment that it's discarded and I could take this card and put it in my hand. And if I'm at eight plus, I would also get to draw an additional card. This card is one of my favorites in the whole game. Um, if we have like a chain of cards that like all happen, SAS cards and like a bunch of cards goes to the discard pile at the same time, Finders Keepers can claim any of them. Um, here's another card. Can Finders Keepers also claim a tag card? <laughs> yes, because it says claim an opponent's card as it's placed in a discard pile. So let's say Kate 
for whatever reason, discarded, maybe regroup or whatever, discarded a card here, I can claim that as well. Sweet. Um, so here's another card, not unless you give me your lunch money. This card also blocks a hype card, but my opponent can get out of it by giving me a cheap shot from their hand. Cheap shot is um, one of the uh, tag cards. It's a pretty good tag card. So let's say Kate has that card in her hand and she tries to do something and I block it with lunch money. Um, that's gonna work unless she just literally gives me this card, she passes it to me, and then this card no longer happens. Now, she could also just block this with another, like whatever or something like that, but this card uh, kind of has, <laughs> kind of has an out clause. There are only eight SAS cards in the whole deck and you, and you kind of get to know them and you start to understand what they do. Um, this one is called Zip It. Now, Zip It can be played at a very low uh, hype number and it blocks another SAS card. So let's say we were doing those blocks and Kate tried to whatever something, I could play Zip It to block her SAS card. But if I'm at six plus, this card can block any card instead. So the higher you are in your hype meter, this card is really powerful in that mid game when you're up high. It's also really powerful at the end of the game when you're trying to win and you're at low hype and you're trying to just like protect some move that you made and they block you and you're like, zip it. <laughs> this also triggers Oliver's trait bonus. I'm just throwing that out there. And Ren's because she likes to play SAS cards. All right, there's two more. Um, these are the Zoe ones that they focus a lot on tag cards. So let's say Kate had some tag cards in play and she was trying to complete a pair. So do you have another collision in your hand? I sure do. So let's say Kate plays that collision. I could say, made you look, this card blocks an opponent's tag card. So this would go back to my hand. So I could do this. Or no, it would go here. It goes into the discard pile. Because yeah. blocking always means the card doesn't happen and it goes to the discard pile. Unless the SAS card says otherwise. Like whatever tells you to put it back in your hand. But normally a block means the card doesn't happen and it goes to the discard pile. And then uh, if you look at the hype bonus on this, 7+, plus, I would get to put that card in my hand as well. Um, and then finally, that we're going to use this same uh, example. Let's say Kate played uh, Collision. I could also play Knock It Off. Knock It Off blocks a pair effect. So Kate is trying to get this pair effect here, moving down too. Um, so if I played uh, Knock It Off, um, I could block the pair effect. So everything else on the card would still happen. This card says tagged player skips their next regroup step. So Kate has still tagged. It's still my turn. I still skip my regroup step, but I'm preventing the pair effect from happening. And if I am at eight plus, I'm going to get the intended pair effect instead. So instead of her going down two, I get to go down two. So this is like a, oh, so that, those are just all the SAS cards and examples of how the timing works. And again, my advice is just slow it down. Everybody plays, you resolve them in reverse order. Everything goes to the discard pile. And if you kind of just slow it down, SAS cards are such a fun part of the game. That's usually where people are standing up and shouting at each other and, and they make really good stories. You know, this game creates stories and the SAS cards are a huge part of it.